Introducing our final speaker, I want to say thank you to joining us again um, and to remind people that um, ASLO members have an opportunity to submit nominations for one of our seven award categories. Um, they reflect different stages in the career, different activities. Um, and without people submitting nomination packages, we won't be able to celebrate some of the science um, and scientists that we've recognized today. There's information on our website. Please take a look. It's never too early to get started. So um, just wanted to make that, give that little plug. Um, nominations will be due later this fall. Okay. Um, so um, our final speaker is Dr. Michael J. Vanny. Um, who is receiving the 2022 Ramon Margalef Award for Excellence in Education. And just as a reminder, this is given to scientists and educators for excellence in teaching and mentoring in the fields of limnology and oceanography. Dr. Vanny is being recognized with the, for, for his passion, passionate and lifelong commitment to education and outstanding mentoring. Dr. Vanny is a professor in the Department of Biology at Miami University. Um, Dr. Vanny's reputation for scientific excellence encourages his students in the broad areas of animal-mediated nutrient cycling and watershed lake interactions in agriculturally dominated systems. He believes in collaborative and supportive research among undergraduates, graduate students, postdocs, and research associates. Dr. Vanny's colleagues and former students have noted the considerable impacts that his thoughtful and inclusive mentorship style has had on their own approach to mentoring, and they often evaluate themselves based on his standards. Please welcome and um, congratulate uh, Dr. Michael J. Vanny. Okay, one more talk. Thank you all for, for staying this long. Um, uh, and of course, thanks to the nominators. Um, it's, this is really special because I was nominated by, mostly by former students. Um, and uh, thanks to the awards committee. Which, uh, oh, sorry. sorry. Well, I'll have to, I guess I can hide behind here if I use the mic. Uh, sorry, yeah. Um, so it's a real honor to be even associated and very humbling to be associated with the name Ramon Margalef. Um, if you haven't read uh, this article in the Aslo Bulletin about his life uh, and his career, I, I would do it. It's really, um, it's really fascinating. Um, I actually had the opportunity to meet uh, Ramon Margalef at a conference about 20 years ago in Spain. Wayne Wurzbach sent me the uh, several pictures. There's none with the two of us together, but I really actually did meet him. Um, and uh, I'm sure he never remembered that, but it was, it was really fun to meet him. So I'm going to um, talk, uh, I'm not going to show any data, so you can turn your brains off. Um, I want to thank my mentors and, and other people. I want to talk about the accomplishments of <clears throat> the people that I've, I've had the pleasure to train. And then just a few thoughts on mentoring at the end. Um, and I want to start with a quote by a baseball player, which is probably an Aslo first. But, um, so Buster Posey, a baseball player, retired after last year, and they honored him a couple weeks ago, and he said, I never thought this was about me. This is about me being part of something, and um, uh, that's the way I feel as well. <clears throat> so I want to start with my parents. Um, so I grew up in New Jersey. This is actually Lake George. My parents went there on their honeymoon. It's the only connection I could find between my parents and lakes and me. Um, <laughs> so they were not scientists. There's no scientists in my family. Um, they, uh, their parents were all immigrants from Italy. Um, they didn't, my parents didn't go to college. They never had the chance, but they, <clears throat> they made sure that we did, my, my siblings and I. And speaking of my siblings, I want to thank them too. I'm the handsome one on the left there. Um, my younger sister and older brother have been um, very supportive over the years, uh, all my life. Um, and now I want to talk about my, my mentor, starting with my undergrad career. <clears throat> I went to undergrad at the University of Montana, and it was actually kind of amazing because my parents had never been west of Philadelphia, but somehow they let me go to the University of Montana. Um, and I had some great mentors, Andy Sheldon, <clears throat> a stream ecologist who I took a couple classes from. But the best thing about Andy was I could literally walk into his office 
um, anytime without an appointment, and <clears throat> he'd spend an hour talking to me about the strategies behind going to grad school, where I should apply, and all that. It was really, really awesome. The other one was Gary Vineyard, who was only at Montana for one year, happened to be my junior year, and I, I did some research in his lab, and before then, I never, I never knew you could do research in a lab as an undergrad. It was, it was, uh, it was really cool. <clears throat> then I went to grad school and worked with Mike Lynch at the University of Illinois. If you know Mike, you might know his work on Daphne genomics, but at one time he was a food web ecologist, and uh, <laughs> Mike Pace is laughing because he knows that. Um, and so um, I worked with Mike uh, in grad school, and I, I like to think about mentoring nuggets that you get from people who are your mentors, and Mike's mentoring nugget was basically do good science. This was kind of the state of mentoring back then, and maybe 1980. <laughs> I'm, I'm being a little facetious, but actually it was great advice because I, um, I, was, I was right out right of undergrad, I didn't know what I was doing, and I really did need to be taught how to do good science, and, <clears throat> and Mike was great at that. Uh, I did two postdocs, the first one was with Dave Schindler at the Experimental Lakes area. Um, Dave was, was a great person to work with and super supportive in every way, and his nugget was, do whole lake experiment. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm not kidding you, actually, I got there on, uh, on my postdoc and I said, well, what did you have in mind? And he said, well, I want you to do some food web stuff and do a whole lake experiment. And it's not every day you get that opportunity, so pretty nice. My second postdoc was at University of Wisconsin uh, in Madison with, at the Center for Limnology, and Jim Kitchell was my official mentor. And those of you who know Jim, or knew Jim, um, wouldn't be surprised to hear that he had a mentoring, like five mentoring nuggets every day before lunch for you. Uh, but the best one, and the one I actually didn't listen to, was life is too short to spend it all in Ohio. <laughs> so here I am 33 years later, still in Ohio. Um, but um, I, did, I have gotten to work in other places as well. Um, Steve Carpenter was sort of an unofficial mentor. Um, Steve was not yet at the University of Wisconsin, but he was there one of my postdoc years on sabbatical. So it was great because he was there on sabbatical, he had no teaching, and I interacted with him a lot, including uh, work on a, a Lake Mendota food web model. And when we were making the model, uh, Steve said, if you can't find a parameter value in 20 minutes, just guess. And I don't know, maybe this is why he was so productive. But <laughs> um, I want, and so you might notice a pattern here about my mentors, demographically speaking. Uh, they're all um, white males, obviously, and <clears throat> if you think diversity and inclusion was, was not so good, uh, is not so good now, it was a lot worse even then. Um, but there were a few um, female scientists who were more senior than I that uh, really were inspiring. Um, Karen Porter, um, <clears throat> I actually tried to do a postdoc with Karen, it didn't work out, but um, as a grad student, her work on zooplankton phytoplankton interactions was um, super inspiring to me. It was really, really novel at, at that time. Jane Lubchenco, who many of you might know as the director of NOAA or advisor to the president on science, uh, was a great food web ecologist who was inspiring in that way, but also with her husband, Bruce Mengi, um, really kind of was a great role model for establishing a uh, dual career couple. And, and uh, she had a lot of advice on that um, as well. And then finally, Mary Power, because of her incredible work on food webs, um, was really inspiring to me as a grad student. And <clears throat> later on, I got the opportunity to, to um, work on a couple of papers with Mary, which was, which was pretty awesome. And all my colleagues at, at Miami, um, uh, you know, they're, we're not an R1, we're not an Ivy League, we're not a fancy liberal arts college, but <clears throat> um, it's a great place to work because our colleagues are so collegial and supportive. Um, so uh, I want to thank all these people for that. I got to thank Maria, my wife. Uh, she's here. She's a limnologist uh, as well, but my wife and collaborator for many years. This is us when we met in Madison, uh, shortly after we met in Madison. And here's us in 2020 um, doing lake sampling on Act in Lake. So in 2020, we did all the lake sampling because COVID restricted a lot of things, and um, we did uh, the more more field work than we've ever done together. And somehow we didn't sink the boat um, <laughs> or throw each other off the boat. 
Uh, and then my daughter, Melina, who uh, we tried to get interested in science and ecology at an early age, but she was having none of it, um, went other directions. But um, her passion inspires me all the time. And uh, <clears throat> also, um, when she, whenever she gets a chance, she reminds me that um, my success is due to my white male privilege. So that's good, because it keeps me grounded. <laughs> OK. Um, and all the people in the lab, this is sort of a transition, all the people in the lab um, who I've had the pleasure to work with, um, and now I'd like to talk a little about um, what I've done with them and, and, uh, and the accomplishments, mostly of, of, of them. So I've mentored 25 grad students, and that's not that much for over 30 years, but I've always believed that it's all about quality rather than quantity when it comes to mentoring. Postdocs, technicians, research associates, um, Dedmer mentioned this, there's technical staff that are really helpful. <clears throat> you don't really think about them when you think about mentoring, but a lot of them went on to do great things, and I, you know, hopefully I had something to do with that. I'm really proud of the fact that I've mentored over 100 undergraduates at Miami. Uh, 31 of those have been REU students. 32 have basically been REU students funded by an internal program. 23 different students have been authors on papers with me, including nine as co-authors. Um, <clears throat> and I've been a co-PI in a couple of REU site grants. Um, so here's just a list of the grad students and postdocs that I've mentored. Um, you'll recognize a lot of those names, maybe. Um, and the undergrads, I just decided, uh, oh, sorry, forgot about this. So I can't choose favorites, but I wanted to highlight some students in some way, so I just figured I'd go with my first and last, or most recent student. So my first student was Shelly Arnett, um, who did her master's with me and published a great paper in ecology. My most recently finished grad student, Tanner Williamson, uh, who finished just a couple years ago um, and had, uh, had several, has several papers, but the most recent one is in ecosystems. And then I thought, well, what's the grad student paper, first authored paper that, that's been cited the most? And it was this one by a different Arnett, Diane Arnett, um, no relation, uh, on zebra mussel, uh, nu nutrient excretion by zebra mussels, which, was, uh, which has been cited quite a bit. So, and that was a master's project, so that's awesome. Um, and, and these meetings like this are great because they get you to see all the generations together. So this is Shelley, my first student ever, and Tanner, who was my most uh, recent current student at the time at the uh, meeting in, in 2016. For undergraduates, I'm just going to um, roll the credits because there's a lot of them. <laughs> so so uh, some of these names you might notice, uh, some you won't. A, a lot of them have done um, really um, incredible things. So again, I'd like to highlight them. The first person ever that I ever published with as, a, as an undergrad mentee was Sue Magenberg. Um, this was from my postdoc in, in Madison. She was an undergrad in Madison, and we had a, um, a nice paper out of that. The most recent is Martina Rogers, who just published a paper a few months ago. She's now a PhD student in atmospheric chemistry at University of Wisconsin, so the Wisconsin connection keeps going, I guess. Um, and then the undergrad who uh, as a first author, uh, has the most citations is this paper by Leslie Knoll uh, in LNO. Okay, so I want to talk a little just about um, teaching and research. Um, some people think that there's a tension between teaching and research. If you teach too much, you can't do research. If you do too much research, you ignore your teaching. Uh, but I always think of it as a synergy, and, and luckily I'm at an <clears throat> institution, and especially a department, that thinks the same way. So I, I think that your teaching improves your research and vice versa. And I'd like to talk about just a couple of things that I've done sort of in the classroom uh, in that regard. So when we teach limnology, um, I have the students do a field experiment. And they, I give them sort of a concept. And they, the students actually design an experiment. And we, then we do it in, in the field. So we do it like a six week, eight week long experiment. Uh, last fall, we did one on road salt. So I, had them read a couple papers on um, road salt effects on fresh waters, and they designed an experiment with the, with the help of my, <clears throat> my great TAs. And we kind of steer them to where we want. But you know, for beginning students to do a three by three uh, factorial experiment is, uh, is, you know, it's not easy for their, um, so I don't mean it's not easy, it's, it's something that they're not familiar with. So I think they learn a lot from doing that, um, and they're, they're usually pretty happy. <laughs> Um, 
And then I want to talk about uh, uh, one other thing I did in the classroom with a capstone class, uh, along with two other people that I co-taught with. We had the students in the class design uh, an interactive exhibit for a nature center called You Live in a Watershed. Because you always, always see those signs like entering the Chesapeake Bay watershed or whatever, but everyone lives in some watershed. So the students designed this exhibit in, in a senior capstone class. Uh, and then we actually had the exhibit built by the people at the Cincinnati Museum of Natural History and Science. And then it's currently on display um, at the Nature Center on the shore of Acton Lake, our main research site. And this is uh, the exhibit here. And my, my co-instructors, uh, Don Kaufman and Ann Ripstra, <coughs> and a few of the students um, who helped design it. And then we, we decided, well, uh, let's figure out if it's doing anything. So I, I collaborated with a colleague from the psychology department of Miami, and we, <coughs> excuse me, we, uh, did some surveys and we, we found that, that um, both adults and K through 12 um, children were actually learning something from that display. So that's, that was pretty cool. So, um, you know, when I, I made a joke about mentoring status in, when I started out in grad school and I think a lot of uh, early career people now get to do really cool mentoring workshops and that's great, but it took me a while. And, but finally, in last year, um, I did this thing, we have these faculty learning communities at Miami where faculty from different departments get together and, and discuss issues and, you know, do other things. But th so this had 11 faculty from different departments, sciences, languages, social sciences, whatnot. And we read and discussed these two books. So finally, after 30 years uh, as being a faculty member, I actually got some formal training in mentoring. So <laughs> that was fun. But they have uh, this book here um, on being a mentor lists uh, 18 different functional mentoring competencies, which some of which I think are um, common sense, but there's a few of them here that I've listed, and the two I want to focus on just for a second are these. Um, one, be an intentional model, so basically be a good role model for your students. You know, your students will <clears throat> see what you do, and if you, if you tell them, you know, here's a deadline, and if you don't make the, your own deadlines, why should they, right? Or, and, and things like that, so I think that's important. <laughs> My students are laughing at me because I'm always <laughs> late. <laughs> and then provide professional exposure um, and visibility. So we still have, uh, some, some of our students have already presented, but there's three more. Uh, Alexis is actually presenting her poster right now, so all of you run over there after this. Um, and then Katie and Lizzie are giving talks uh, tomorrow. So I think, you know, one of the things we can do is take them to these meetings and, and, uh, and provide that opportunity. <clears throat> so I just want to conclude basically by saying that, um, you know, as for the people there who are learning to be mentors, you won't be perfect. No one is. Um, so I must have done something right to get this award, but I know for a fact that there's students in my classes who might not think I was great, and I know for a fact I have had grad students who didn't think I was a, a good advisor. So, you know, it happens. Nobody's perfect, but um, you, c you can you can still be um, good in your, in your field. So um, I'd like to thank everybody for listening and, and for sticking it out till almost 6 o'clock. Um, uh, and thank you again to the awards committee for this awesome award.